There are at least three ways to build most EDH decks. Strong! Fun. These intros aren't funny. <laughs> and mean. Let's look at the strong fun and mean ways that I would build Nekusar, the Mind Razor. And the video starts right now. Special thanks to our Patreon supporters who power our channel. Check out our Patreon for monthly giveaways, exclusive content, and even a starring role in our fanfight series. Link in the description below. Hello and welcome to the day. Thank you for spending your time with us. Welcome back to another episode of Jake and Joel or Magic. I am Joel. Today we're going to talk about the three ways that I would build Nekusar the Mind Razor. But first, if you would, go down there, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. It really helps us out. And if there's a commander that you want me to build three ways, let me know in the comments and you might see it in an upcoming video. Let's jump over into this commander. Nekusar, the Mind Razor. Classic commander here, everybody. Red, black, blue, two other for a legendary creature zombie wizard, 2-4. At the beginning of each player's draw step, that player draws an additional card. And whenever an opponent draws a card, Nekusar, the Mind Razor, deals one damage to that player. So we've got a little bit of group draw built in. We've got a little bit of punisher built in. And there's a couple of different ways, a few different ways, that we can take advantage of those strategies. For the strong way, we're going to go with a group hug draw but punisher style for the fun way we're going to go with a deck called lich's revenge and for the mean way we're going to go with a wheel strategy let's look at the strong way so for the strong way on this deck, we want to first build in as much redundancy as we can on what Nekusar's already doing, having people draw extra cards and punishing them for doing that. So first we look to Spiteful Visions, a black or a red and a black or a red plus two. At the beginning of each player's draw step, that player draws an additional card. Whenever a player draws a card, Spiteful Visions deals one damage to that player. This is Nekusar but an enchantment. This is Nekusar but harder to deal with for some decks. So we definitely definitely want to be running Spiteful Visions to achieve some redundancy. Fate Unraveler, one black, three other for a enchantment creature hag, three four, whenever an opponent draws a card, Fate Unraveler deals one damage to that player. So we've got Nekusar, but just for our opponents, built in redundancy. We can lean into this this way. Underworld Dreams, black, black, black for an enchantment. Whenever an opponent draws a card, Underworld Dreams deals one damage to him or her. We really want to double down, triple down, quadruple Drupal down on this Punisher for drawing cards strategy so that we can use our payoffs to really start doing some serious damage. Fevered Visions, a red, a blue, and one other at the beginning of each player's end step. That player draws a card. If that player is your opponent and has four or more cards in hand, Fevered Visions deals two damage to him or her. This is an enchantment that is going to take advantage of the fact that we're putting cards in everyone's hand. Normally that would be a bad thing. You don't want to give your opponents more resources, but if we're punishing them at the same time, and we're not really giving them a chance to take advantage of all those resources, we can get that win, even though we are doing something you normally wouldn't want to do. Stormfist Crusader is another creature version of this, one red, one black, for a menacing 2-2 human knight. At the beginning of your upkeep, each player draws a card and loses a life, so we get a little bit extra of both abilities on this one creature. Phyrexian Tyranny, I love this card. This card's from back around when I started playing. A red, a black, and a blue for an enchantment. Whenever a player draws a card, that player loses two life, unless he or she pays two. So you can stack some stacks-like abilities, some tax abilities, put some more of that kind of stuff into your deck, and Phyrexian Tyranny is really going to start limiting what your opponents can do each turn, or they're going to be taking damage on top of the damage that they're already taking for drawing cards. Now, let's make them draw more cards. Howling Mind, two for an artifact. At the beginning of each player's draw step, if Howling Mind's untapped, that player draws a card. Boom, now we're drawing extra cards on top of Nekusar. Font of Mythos, this is even more cards, four mana. At the beginning of each player's draw step, that player draws two additional cards. We're just gonna be like, yeah, take all the cards you want. You're taking some damage from Nekusar, you're taking some damage from Spiteful Visions and Underworld 
dreams, but that's fine. That's fine. Draw your cards. Draw your cards. Forced Fruition is one of the probably meanest cards that I will ever put in a strong category, just because it is so good. Two blue, four other for an enchantment. Whenever an opponent plays a spell, that player draws seven cards. This card is bonkers, okay? Every single time they're playing a spell, they're drawing seven cards. They're going to have to discard at the end of the turn. It's just going to overwhelm them with choices. They know they need to deal with Nekusar. They know they need to deal with Spiteful Visions or Underworld Dreams, so they stop taking damage. This is seven damage just with Nekusar on the battlefield. This is seven damage every time they cast a spell. Forced Fruition is so good. Dictate of Crufix is like Howling Mind, but an enchantment, and it has Flash. Two blue, one other at the beginning of each player's draw step. That player draws an additional card. Perfect. That's exactly what we're looking for. Tefri's Puzzle Box, four cost artifact. At the beginning of each player's draw step, that player puts the cards in their hand on the bottom of their library in any order, then draws that many cards. This is like Howling Mind or like Font of Mythos, except we're getting more triggers off of this. If they've got any more than two cards already in their hand, hand, they're going to get to take, have to take, more damage from Nekusar's triggered abilities or any of the triggered abilities on the redundancy that we built into the deck for Nekusar's ability. That's the type of stuff you want to look for for the strong strategy of building around Nekusar. Really lean into his two abilities and make sure that you've got as much redundancy on that as possible because this is going to get more powerful in the aggregate. The more damage that each player is taking every time they draw cards is only good for you. Let's look at the fun way to build Nekusar and that is Lich's Revenge. In the flavor text of the Mind Razor, it says his enemies wondered if the Lich King's brutal death and unnatural rebirth had been his plan all along. And that's what we want to lean into. This is going to be a thematic take on Lich's, you know, this like high risk, high reward, glory and death. I'm undead though, so you have to fulfill these different requirements to actually make me die. So we're going to look for a lot of cards that thematically tie into that. Having Ghoul Lich, one black, one blue, three other for a zombie wizard. Four, four, pay one. You may cast target creature card in a graveyard this turn. When you cast that card this turn, having Golich gains all activated abilities of that card until end of turn. That's cool, but being able to cast creature cards out of any graveyard, especially since we're already building in a lot of like discard and you got to discard back down to your seven cards in your hand and we're just going to be filtering through their deck and a lot of it's going to be dumping into their graveyard. Having Golich probably has a place in this deck regardless of if you want to lean really hard into the Lich theme. Draw new Lich Lord, one black, one blue, three other, zombie Lord, three, three. If damage would be dealt to him, sacrifice that many permanents instead. You can tap it. Target instant or sorcery in your graveyard has flashback until end of turn. Its flashback cost becomes equal to its mana cost as you play it. For that strong way to build, or even the mean way that we're going to talk about here in a second, there are good instants and sorceries that can wheel everyone's hand, that can make every player draw a ton of cards, and if you can recast those with a card like Dralnu, you're just getting double value out of that. Lich's Mirror is super, super flavorful here. Five mana for an artifact. If you would lose the game, instead, shuffle your hand, your graveyard, and all permanents you own into your library, then draw seven cards, and your life total becomes 20. <laughs> so it's like this reset button, but you don't have that much time to catch up. You really get maybe another turn, maybe two more turns, because all of the other players are going to be way ahead of you at this point, and you're essentially restarting the game with half of the starting life total. But from a flavor standpoint, this is exactly like a Lich's Curse, you know, this I'm not dead yet but I'm not really in that much of a better place. It's kind of this damned if you do, damned if you don't thing. Lich's Tomb, pay four for an artifact. You don't lose the game for having zero or less life. Whenever you lose life, sacrifice a permanent for each one life you lost. So you want to play this late in the game when you're already at a very low life total, but you've got a lot of permanents. And this can buy you another turn, buy you another two or three turns so that maybe you can turn it around. Plus, with all of the Punisher effects dealing everyone damage, Lich's Tomb can keep you alive while you're burning everyone down at the exact same time. Lich's Mastery, three black, three other for a legendary enchantment that has hexproof. It says you can't lose the game. Whenever you gain life, draw that many cards. Whenever you lose life, for each one life you lost, exile a permanent you control or a card from your hand or graveyard, which is good because we're going to be drawing a lot of cards with this deck. And when it leaves the battlefield, you lose the game. This is exactly what we want in a Lich's Curse. You know, we can't lose unless you remove this at which 
point we immediately lose because the curse has been broken and we'll have cards in our hand hopefully to pitch away to all of the damage that we might be taking phylactery lich is a three black zombie that's five five it's got indestructible but you're gonna have to have an artifact on the battlefield because it says when it enters the battlefield field put a phylactery counter on an artifact you control and when you control no permanence with a phylactery counter on them sacrifice phylactery lich this can represent a fantastic indestructible blocker like i said you do have to like drop a counter on your soul ring or something like that you got to make sure you have an artifact on the battlefield before you can play this zombie but having an indestructible 5-5 is going to be a lot of protection especially if you're playing against some kind of voltron deck or some really heavy attacking deck that's going to attack with a few big creatures not really go wide but it can be this indestructible wall for you that can give you the time you need to sort of assemble all your pieces and really start burning everyone down from drawing cards. Vindictive Lich is cool because it's one of the few Lich cards I found that really only benefits you. One black, three other. When it dies, choose one or more. Each mode must target a different player. Target opponent sacks a creature. Target opponent discards two cards. Target opponent loses five life. This can be effective. It's not a huge amount of you know, punch in an EDH game, but having it spread out across the battlefield and affecting multiple opponents, it can be very beneficial to you. Lich Lord of Unks, one black, one blue, one other. For a 2-2 zombie wizard, got two activated abilities here, a black and a blue tap it to put a 1-1 one, one blue and black zombie wizard creature token onto the battlefield, or two black and two blue, target opponent loses X life and puts the top X cards of his or her library in his or her graveyard, where X is the number of zombies you control. So, Commander and this alone, we got two life, two cards into their graveyard where X is the number of zombies. This is going to let you make tokens over and over again as many times as you can obviously tap it. But having this ability to mill a player out as a secondary win con could actually benefit you. We're already having them draw a ton of cards and they've got to discard what they can't keep in their hand. So having Lich Lord of Unks also milling them at the same time is going to represent a possible other way to win, other way to destroy an opponent. We've also got the Calculating Lich. Two black, four other for a zombie, five, five wizard. Menace whenever a creature attacks one of your opponents, that player loses a life. So we're sort of incentivizing our opponents to attack each other because Calculating Lich is going to do damage to our opponents if they're attacking our opponents. That ability also combined with Nekusar and any of the redundancy we've got is just more Punisher, more just ping, 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 and we're going to win through like death of a thousand paper cuts. That's a fun way to build Nekusar. Let's look at the mean way and go with a wheel strategy. Got to start off the wheel strategy by going with the namesake Wheel of Fortune here, a red and two other. Each player discards his or her hand and draws seven cards. That's seven damage to each opponent for three mana if Nekusar or Spiteful Visions, Underworld Dreams cards like this are on the battlefield. And it's just, you know, exponentially more with each other redundant card we have on the battlefield that does that same effect. And so having one of these on the battlefield and then having everyone wheel their hands, you're not only destroying their strategies that they've been like coming up with i'm going to do this i'm going to do this and make them sort of have to constantly be on the back foot and reassessing what they're doing because they're getting a new hand over and over again but you're doing a ton of damage every single time you play one of these spells like whispering madness a black blue two other each player discards his or her hand then draws cards equal to the greatest number of cards a player discarded this way you can cipher this onto a creature i would assume that a deck like this is not going to be running a ton of creatures because you really want to focus on your commander protecting the commander with some art Artifacts that give it hexproof, things like that. Some removal to protect yourself, and then your pieces that redundancy your abilities and make sure that you're hitting your strategy and making it happen. It does have the ability, though, the cipher ability, though, which is nice. So if you do have something like Phylactery Lich on the battlefield and it's an un, you know indestructible attacker, you could possibly cipher it onto a card like that and have it be able to be repeated, which would just be nuts. Dark Deal is very similar, except it puts our cards in our opponent's hands going the opposite direction a black and two other each player discards all the cards in his or her hand then draws that many cards minus one so we do get to start sort of start discarding cards from their hand because we're giving them a ton of cards but they're drawing cards and they're taking damage echo of eons is a card that's going to allow you to do it twice six mana two blue each player shuffles their hand and graveyard into their library then draws seven cards and you can flash this back for three mana now you can flash it back as part of a discard after you 
you know, you don't necessarily have to cast the first part, especially if we're going to be doing some discard punisher, you know, sort of all around abilities. But Echo of Eons does represent this thing that you need to consider, and that's that it shuffles their everything into their library. So if you're trying to finish off opponents through mill, you probably want to skip Echo of Eons, but if you're just leaning on the damage from Nekusar or Spiteful Visions or Underworld Dreams, etc., you can run this card because it will represent two uses of this, which would be excellent. Megram. Megram is a pet card of mine. I've loved this card since I started playing. A black and two other for an enchantment. Whenever an opponent discards a card, it deals two damage to him or her. So now not only are we getting damage on our opponents for each card that we're forcing them to draw but every time they're discarding to one of our wheels or trying to get back down to hand size megram is going to do even more damage to them and we're just going to be punishing them all around redundancy for megram is liliana's caress a black and one other for whenever an opponent discards a card that player loses two life straight up same exact ability but it's just another card that does it raider's wake is similar four mana whenever an opponent discards a card that player loses two life you also have this raid ability where at the beginning of your end step if you attack a cre with a creature this turn target opponent discards a card that's fine but we really want that megram ability redundancy on that megram ability on another enchantment this is sort of a megram for one player six mana two black for an enchant player or a curse whenever enchanted player draws a card they lose two life and you gain two life plus if we discard this as part of a wheel we can cast it for just four mana and get it on whoever's the biggest threat really early on and make them start draining life over to us for all of the cards that they're discarding painful quandary five mana this is just one of my favorite enchantments probably the entirety of edh whenever an opponent casts a spell that player either loses five life or discards a card that's your choice every single time they play a spell this is just so punishing and i've seen painful quandary win games just by itself if it goes unanswered blood chief ascension is going to be essential in this deck that second ability whenever a card is put into an opponent's graveyard from anywhere if blood chief ascension has three or more quest counters on it that player loses two life you gain two life and the way you activated it getting getting the quest counters on it at the beginning of each end step and if an opponent lost two or more life this turn you can put a quest counter on it and that's each end step not just yours so really all you need is nekusar on the battlefield and blood chief ascension on the battlefield because everybody's going to be drawing two cards and every opponent's going to be taking a damage for every card they draw that's two at the end of each end step all it really should take if Nekusar and Blood Chief both survive a turn around is one pass through your opponents. That's bop, bop, bop. You got three quest counters. And then whenever an opponent has a card go into their graveyard from anywhere, library, hand, battlefield, anything, they lose two, you gain two. You're getting that life drain going. So with all these wheels, you might reach the bottom of your deck and you need some secondary win conditions. So for that, we're going to lean on cards like Thassa's Oracle, which says if X is greater than or equal to the number of cards that you looked at on the top of your library, you win the game, where X is equal to your devotion to blue. Jace, Wielder of Mysteries, that passive ability on there, if you would draw a card while your library has no cards on it, you in it, you win the game instead. Or the OG Laboratory Maniac, if you would draw a card while your library has no cards in it, you win the game. These are really good cards to have in a wheel strategy, just in case you wheel all the way down and you haven't finished off your opponents yet and you're at the end of your library. Whoops, play Lab Maniac. Maniac, go to draw a card, I can't, I win. Those are the strong, fun, and mean ways that I would build Nekusar Mind Razor. Let's close the book. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you play in your Nekusar the Mind Razor deck. I know this is a fan favorite commander, and I hope that you enjoyed my builds. If there is a commander you want me to build three ways, let me know down in the comments. Like I said, and maybe you'll see it in an upcoming video. Other than that, if you want to support us past hitting that like button, hitting that subscribe button, we have a Patreon. The link is down in the description below. I'll catch you later. I'm tapped out. <laughs>